Ciao, grazie. <laughs> And now we would like to invite uh, Dr. Vladan Vucinic from Leipzig University, who is, I, far as I know, very experienced in hematopathic stem cell collection and processing to uh, give insight in new techniques of hematopoietic stem cell mobilization. Thank you very much for the ni nice announce, announcement, <laughs> announcement introduction. Um, dear colleagues, I am looking forward to being in a possibility to present you the um, uh, yeah. once again dear colleagues thank you very much uh, for for uh, the invitation to come to Lit uh, Lithuania and to have the opportunity to talk to you about the new techniques in stem cell mobilization. Um, this is an, uh, uh, an important aspect in, in performing autologous transplantation. It is, so to say, the other side of, of, uh, of the story. Uh, it, during uh, this next 25-30 minutes, we are going to talk about the indications for stem cell mobilization. We are going to talk about the goals of stem cell mobilization. We are going to talk about uh, steady state and about chemo mobilization, about factors predicting poor mobilization, and about new agents. Um, the numbers of transplantations worldwide are rising, and you see here that uh, in the in the last years the the, the incidence or the numbers of autologous transplantations are also also having an exponential exponential cur curve. Um, we have already seen the left dia uh, showing the major indications for uh, autologous transplantations. You see that those are the plasma cell disorders. Um, the second uh, group of indications are uh, non-Hodgkin lymphomas. And on the right uh, hand side of the dia, you can see the um, numbers of, of uh, autologous transplantation perform performed in European countries. Um, in the last year, I said there is, in the last years, there is uh, a huge incidence of autologous transplantations, especially in the countries which didn't perform it uh, before. Um, I found it very interesting that uh, the countries like, for example, Romania uh, have an, uh, an increase of 400% within, within, within the last 10 years. Uh, apropos Germany, we have, uh, so to say, um, a standard count of about um, 3,000, 3,200 transplantations per year. Those are the data from the German Registry of Stem Cell Transplantation. When you uh, want to perform a stem cell transplantation, you need the cells, of course, and your goals are to have sufficient stem cell yield, to have enough cells. Sometimes, uh, especially in tandem transplantation setting or um, in most, mostly all myeloma uh, patients, in the time of mobilization, you are already aware that you need the stem cells for performing multiple transplantations. Um, your cells have to have sufficient cell, qu cell quality and cell composition, meaning they have to feel, fulfill the criteria of quality control, and you uh, want as a physician, that your patient does not have insufficient mobilization, that he doesn't have unnecessary very many uh, leukapheresis, and you want to try to avoid all possible medical complications. And uh, we're going to we're going to start with the stem cell yield. Um, don't be afraid of the dia; it is uh, a little bit overloaded with uh, with uh, with um, the numbers and and uh, and letters. But I'm going to try to to analyze it. Um, in a short time. In case that you have a transplant with uh, less than one million cells per kilogram body weight, you have complications associated with uh, a large number of uh, transfusions of red, red blood cells, and in some cases you can have a permanent loss of engraftment. Um, the bad transplants, meaning uh, 1.5 till 2 million per kilogram body weight, are associated with delayed uh, neutrophil recovery. 
uh, optimal transplant should be between three and five million. And uh, in this case, the, uh, the um, neutrophil and platelet recovery are earlier. In case of, of uh, giving a quite a large number, you can um, make the regeneration process shorter, but uh, um, first of all, the question is why, if, if this, this uh, huge mobilization is really necessary, and secondary, a second thing is, um, sometimes you don't have difference in, in uh, the terms of, of uh, leuco uh, leukocytal regeneration or platelet regeneration. The other uh, question about yield is how can I, how can I as a uh, mobilizing physician or collecting physician uh, optimize the quality of my graft? And uh, I can do it with mobilization regimen, choosing, for example, chemo mobilization or steady state mobilization with, for example, new agents. I can uh, uh, perform a specific timing of, of mobilization uh, regimen and uh, administration of apheresis, meaning, for example, uh, I have a patient with, uh, with uh, lymphoma with a huge um, amount of uh, infiltrations, uh, with a with 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 uh, um, significant infiltration of his bone marrow. I'm going to collect him when, he is, uh, when his bone marrow is clear, and I'm not going to wait for a very many uh, chemotherapy lines. Also, I should need, uh, I should have uh, good technical aspects like uh, the flow cytometry and should be able to perform large volume apheresis. Um, the, in any kind of mobilization, is it on one hand the uh, chemo mobilization or steady state mobilization, the role of growth factors is necessary, is essential. And uh, when you give the growth factors, GCSF, you stimulate the you stimulate the, the um, neutrophils. Neutrophils produce uh, neutrophil-lytic enzymes, for example, this MMP9, and those enzymes uh, perform the, um, so to say, lease uh, between CXCR4 receptor and uh, STF1. On this case, in, in this case, the stem cells mobilize from the bone marrow in the peripheral blood and are collectable. The other question is the timing of the mobilization. You can perform it like in this, this uh, case A. You can give a dis disease-specific chemotherapy, and after the patient uh, has uh, his, uh, his uh, leukocyte recovery, you can give the, the growth factors, meaning steady-state mobilization, perform the apheresis, and then perform high-dose chemotherapy. The other possibility is to give the patient the disease-specific chemotherapy, to wait for a plasia phase to stimulate him with growth factors and to perform apheresis during the the course during the stationary course of the of the disease specific chemotherapy and then to perform the high dose chemotherapy or to perform disease specific chemotherapy to let him let him uh, has his uh, his uh, his uh, hematological recovery and after having established hematological recovery to give a mobilization chemotherapy and after mobilization chemotherapy to give the the uh, growth factors and to collect him apropos chemo mobilization um, it has advantages, definitely. You have higher yields than GCSF alone. You have, uh, um, so to say, improved mobilization in the patients which are traditionally difficult to mobilize, for example, lymphomas. You have reduction of graft contamination with the tumor cells because you give a chemotherapy which is, um, in most cases, tumor-specific. Uh, so you can also treat the underlying, underlying disease, but on the other hand, uh, this sort of mobilization has also drawbacks. And drawbacks are complications, meaning uh, febrile episodes, febrile neutropenia, um, having, uh, uh, sometimes you are in a need to perform transfusions, and sometimes your patient has to be hospitalized for, um, even due to the com complications, uh, for many more days than it's uh, essentially necessary. So you have a problem to, to uh, know about the kinetics of the mobilization. Um, 
here is just um, 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 an example of the chemotherapies which you can use in order to perform chemo mobilization. Um, in case of myeloma patients, it is uh, normally cyclophosphamide based. Uh, those are cyclophosphamide based therapies. And in case of lymphoma patients, you can use etoposide uh, based as eventually separate mobilization chemotherapy. In, on the other hand, the, stand, the steady state mobilization is uh, uh, possible to perform in, in outpatient units. Your patient is receiving filgrastim or lenograstim for five to seven days. Uh, it's very well tolerated. You can um, uh, rely on the pharmacokinetics. Um, normally, you don't need to uh, admit the patient to, to the hospital. Normally, the patients don't need transfusions before it, uh, because of it. Um, but on the other hand, you have a lower yield of CD34 cells, um, of stem cells, comparing to chemo mobilization. Um, let's have a look at the both, uh, both um, uh, methods. And uh, we know that in case of about 15% of patients, we have a mobilization failure. In case that we are planning uh, tandem transplantations, then um, these rates are depending from, from a different um, um, literature, uh, literature source, even higher. And that's why it's important to define predictive factors for of poor mobilization. One of the essential things is the uh, flow cytometry. Uh, and uh, here, is a, uh, here is an example from our lab. You see here the population of, of uh, stem cells. And uh, according due to, with the help of, of uh, fax analysis, you can quantify the amount of, of stem cells in the peripheral blood. And according to this number, you can plan your, your uh, harvest. Um, in the last years, it, there were very many discussions about the factors predicting the poor mobilization. I will just skip, uh, I will, I will jump, jump through the factors. They can be treatment related, like for example, uh, patients who um, had quite a lot, of, a lot of cycles of chemotherapy. We have already heard that, uh, for example, lenalidomide is not really the best option in primary therapy in order to collect stem cells. Uh, the, there is also a, a proportion of patients who have a bad bone marrow reserve. And this bone marrow reserve you can uh, check with thrombocytopenia, for example, or the patients who have bone marrow infiltration of the primary, uh, primary underlying disease. They are also sometimes very complicated to, to mobilize. Uh, elderly patients, female patients, patients with uh, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, sometimes also diabetes patients, patients with advanced disease are also um, uh, factors which uh, can influence your mobilization. Um, it seems that smoking and uh, adipositas can also be um, risk factors. And also, um, we need to define a potential uh, or poor mobilizer. And According to, the set, uh, according to the stem cell counts in the peripheral blood, we can say that the patient who has less than 20 um, per microliter is actually a poor mobilizer. But less than 20 is a, ra a rather broad spectrum of, of the patients. In case that uh, the patient has a 11 till 19, we can call him borderline. And uh, in some cases, you can collect enough stem cells. A relative uh, poor mobilizer has uh, between 6 and 10 per microliter, and absolute poor mobilizer has uh, less than 5 per microliter. The Italian group has also defined uh, proven poor mobilizers. Those are the patients who um, couldn't reach 20 per microliter after um, 6 days of steady state or 20 days of chemo mobilization. They could uh, not reach a yield of 2 million um, after all in general, all in all, three aphereses. And also, there is a group of, pr of predicted poor mobilizers. Those are the patients who have already failed the previous collection attempt, who previously received extensive chemotherapy or radiotherapy, or who have uh, advanced disease, refractory disease, extensive bone marrow involvement, or um, um, age, elderly age. Um, the, in your everyday practice, you want to reduce also the, the hospital days. So um, sometimes it's useful to use an algorithm 
who is going to be a predictable pool mobilizer. And one, one, of, uh, one of the best algorithms is the cost algorithm from American Society of uh, Bone Marrow Transplantation, which is based on steady state mobilization. And in steady state mobilization, you can perform the measurement of the stem cells in peripheral blood on the day four. And in case that this count is rather low, you um, can then think of inducing new mobilizing agents like Plerixafor, for example. Also another thing is to be able to perform large volume apheresis with, uh, in, in Europe it is allowed to perform four times the uh, total blood volume. I've uh, managed, I've, I've mentioned uh, Plerixafor one minute ago. Plerixafor is selective and reversible antagonist of CXCR4 receptor. Um, in, uh, by, by binding on, on uh, CXCR4, it's uh, actually blocking the, the uh, binding place for SDF1, and on this way the stem cell is uh, leaving the bone marrow environment and coming to the peripheral blood. Adding of, uh, of um, uh, Plerixafor to GCSF mobilized more stem cells per apheresis. You can perform fewer apheresis, in case that you need, for example, 12 million stem cells in tandem myeloma patient, um, you can have you, you have normally higher yields of uh, of stem cells, and in average, in the in the in the study which uh, led to the uh, license license of the drug, um, it increased 3.5 times the CD34 counts in peripheral blood. Perixafor is uh, allowed, like, according to the European Medical Agency, in uh, combination with the GCSF by pool mobilizers with lymphoma and myeloma in a standard dosage of uh, 240 microgram per kilogram, about 6 to 11 hours before apheresis. Um, Plerixa for uh, collected stem cells have a little bit more primitive uh, um, stem cell subsets have an uh, increase of absolute lymphocyte counts, and it is proven that uh, lymphocyte reco recovery is coming sooner after performing autologous transplantation. The question is, where should I put Pledixafor in my settings? I can do it by expected poor mobilization. I can do it by poor um, poor collection, poor harvesting after the first leukapheresis, and I can also use it in remobilization setting. And those are the data from Compassionate Use Program, um, uh, published by EBMT, and uh, they could show that in very many patients the um, uh, the collection with Perixafor was possible. Have a look in, in, in uh, all patients, meaning non-Hodgkin lymphoma, myeloma, and Hodgkin lymphoma, by adding Plerixafor, the um, apheresis was possible is in about more than, uh, in about 75% of the cases. Um, you can use Plerixafor also as a, as a um, first-line setting, and uh, the group from Liverpool did it in this fantastic trial. Fantastic is a brevitation of Plerixafor harvesting and no chemotherapy for transplantation of autologous stem cells in cancer. They used 98 myeloma and lymphoma patients. They gave Plerixafor um, to each of them after the day four, and they had the primary objective of harvesting uh, four, millions autolo four million autologous cells. Um, you remember that the definition of autologous transplant is at least two million, and uh, they compared it to historic control group with uh, chemo mobilization with GCSF. They have proven that uh, Plerixafo is faster than chemotherapy. They have proven that more patients could be mobilized. And have a look, from 98 patients included in the study, um, actually only four patients failed the mobilization. To be honest, um, uh, the, the patients who, uh, who reached the primary objective are about 70% and uh, uh, about 2 million was reached in 94 patients. There is another question. Um, in, uh, there are literature sources which, uh, which, prove, which have proven that uh, Plerixafor can make a displacement of leukemia cells in the peripheral blood. There are also some studies saying that uh, mobilization of myeloma cells is also possible after Plerixafor. And uh, there are 
On the other hand, the studies which are saying that the stimulation with growth factor also mobilizes tumor cells. That's why it's uh, essential to prove if the patient um, is free in his bone marrow before the mobilization process. Um, also, regarding Plodixafor, there is a CALM trial. It is a collaboration between EBMT and Genzyme to, compl to complete the data and to collect the data to have a look if, if um, uh, the, the mobilization with Plodixafor influences the survival of the patients with lymphoma, with lymphoma or myeloma. Another aspect is the old papers from the 90s um, make this paradigm with the tumor cell contamination very, really relative. It is the question if it's really extremely significant and if, it's, if it affects the progression-free survival or overall survival in myeloma and lymphoma patients. Um, before I conclude, I will show you our data with Plerixofo. We presented those data at, at uh, the symposium of uh, German um, Society for Hematology Oncology um, in Basel last year. Um, we had we have analyzed the patients which we which we mobilized with Plerixafo within the last three years, also years from 2011 till 2014. In the analysis, uh, were take only ta the, the patients taken whose uh, transplants uh, fulfilled the quality criteria. So we had 28 patients with Plerixafo with uh, 35 aphereses. Um, half of them had multiple myeloma, about a half had uh, lymphoma. We had two patients with uh, both myeloma and lymphoma and one Mobus Hodgkin patient. You see the median age was uh, about 61 years um, and uh, more than 60% of patients were older than, than, than 60. We had uh, normal distribution of, of sex and we had um, um, at least one previous chemotherapy in almost all patients. We uh, applied uh, Plerixafor according to the, to the, uh, to the um, um, uh, dosage which is, which is 240 microgram per kilogram and uh, um, in this case we had two, 22 chemo, chemo mobilizations and six steady state mobilizations. Every patient uh, was, uh, in every patient a large volume of heresis was undertaken and we saw in the facts analysis of the day before and the day after the, the use of Plerixafo that we had 3.3 times increase in the stem cell concentration in the peripheral blood. It is, it is uh, corresponding to the results of, of, the, of the studies. Um, we took a retrospective control cohort um, and uh, we compared it. You see there is a difference, of course, by good, good mobilizers. Um, after performing, after, giving, after having given uh, Plerixafor, we could perform by all the patients the, the stem cell apheresis. Um, the, the data here shown are not the cumulative numbers. So um, the person having 1.6 uh, collected had also is one of those who were uh, uh, who were collected two times, and uh, we um, we have made it in 93% uh, of the patients with one apheresis to collect uh, at least two million cells. We had excellent results for vitality. We also had quite a good results for proliferation capacity. And uh, of, of this count, we transplanted nearly 80 patients, and all patients uh, achieved both leukocyte and thrombocyte recovery, and those data do not differ from the data that we see usually. One um, small, small excursion to, to uh, Noilasta. Noilasta is uh, pegylated uh, nupogen, is uh, um, is, is done in single dose application and it has comparable kinetics with uh, with uh, filgrastim or lenograstim. Um, before I um, come to the to the end, I will conclude that uh, autologous transplantation can now, thanks to the thanks to the um, new mobilizing agents, can be performed in more than 90% of patients with the minimal need of remobilization strategies. Um, we need, though, to determine the most effective regimen. We need to know what, uh, if we uh, want the patients to be, to be stimulated in outpatient setting or in, in uh, hospitalized setting. 
uh, we definitely need the phase three clinical studies with the new, with the new mobilizing agents. Um, we need to know what are the effects of the new mobilization strategies on tumor mobilization, and uh, we shouldn't forget the pharmacoeconomic aspects of, of whole. Um, there are uh, also alternative targets for mobilization, but uh, um, at, at the moment it is, it is uh, um, something for the future. I thank you very much for your attention, and I uh, am looking forward to the questions. Thank you very much for a wonderful presentation, and the uh, floor is open for questions. Coming back to these poems where we, uh, or you observed a, po uh, a capillary leak syndrome, probably linked to GCSF, maybe in next situation you have to use Mosobil. <laughs> Uh, the capillary leak syndrome is a known uh, side effect of, of um, GCSF. We are uh, also um, informing every patient and every donor about this potential complication in a written form. And uh, it's also something that uh, I will, I, I'm encouraged, uh, I'm, I'm the same opinion about you, with you about it. Well, uh, I have a comment on the. Um La, uh, if you infuse cells uh, with uh, tumor contamination, it doesn't seem, there are two studies at least, that doesn't seem to play a role if you have tumor cells among the cells that you infuse. In fact, we made a gene marking study once to see whether relapses uh, derived from the infused cells, we never found it. It was not a very good study, but anyway, we never found a relapse uh, with marked cells. So uh, do you have any explanation? Why do the infused cells never cause relapse? I cannot tell it, I, I, I cannot give the answer to the question. We perform every time before we do the stem cell mobilization, we perform the bone marrow um, investigation at the patient. We do not perform the contamination test of the, of the product. Um, so uh, I, I'm, uh, um, I'm thinking that our products do not have uh, tumor cells. I cannot, I cannot give you the proper explanation for it, but it's a very, very interesting subject. Well, we don't know really if uh, malignant uh, plasma cells take. So this uh, is a question which we had when we analyzed our patient which got a leukemic uh, donor bone marrow he was allochemic, so he couldn't, you couldn't see it in the, in the blood. And uh, the, he also recovered by normal uh, cells, but then eight months later, he got uh, actually the leukemia of the donor. So uh, this may, be, may have something to do with the uh, uh, take of the cells. Probably they are too mature to take. And I would like to ask uh, a question. If we in multiply myeloma for induction, moving only for imits and uh, proteasome uh, induction chemotherapy uh, induction, so for mobilization, we will use only a steady state mobilization or still there is room for cyclophosphamide induced mobilization if we're using only imits and proteosomes and avoiding calculating agents in induction? Controversial question, and I think uh, very many uh, hematologists would give very many um, answers to you. I personally would, uh, would uh, perform a chemo mobilization, but I would have Plerixa 4 ready on the board. Thank you, thank you. Any questions? So thank you, thank Dr. you, Vucinic. And uh, we're changing a little bit topic and <laughs> moving to.